Coach here. Man, thanks for taking a couple of minutes. I really enjoy having you guys here each and every Friday. Hey, this week we're talking about timers. We're talking about irrigation timers and we're talking about lighting timers. Those things on the wall out there in the garage or out on the side of the house that maybe most of you know what to do with them. Maybe some of you look at them going, I'm not touching that thing. Well, maybe by the end of today's video, you guys will have enough confidence to go out there and program it, schedule it, and adjust it for fall and winter, and then obviously next spring and summer. Are you with me? Let's get started. Hey, I'm Matt, you can call me coach. Every Friday I bring with me landscape DIY education, concepts and theories, ideas and solutions, so you guys can go out and tackle a landscape project yourself, get professional results, save a whole lot of money in the process, and in this day and age, be a lot more self-reliant. Man, after a 20 plus year career in the green industry, I'm bringing with me a lot of knowledge and experience that I wanna share with you guys the new, modern, educated, self-reliant homeowner of today. So back in the day, and we're gonna say the 70s, back in the 70s, when I was working in Navalee's Nursery, we had to go through quite a training program and almost like a continuous education program. And being at the ripe old age of 19, yeah, I, I dove in with uh, both feet. And I really enjoyed the attention that this company gave me as far as my education and my desire to get better. Well, part of that was in irrigation, and part of that irrigation was knowing about timers. Now, back in that day, we were studying the old Rick Dell timers that you see right here, and they had the old mechanical gears on under electricity, and they had little pins and wheels, and the old skip -a days um, basically, they did the same thing as the old modern ones do today, but they were just much more simplistic. As a matter of fact, when you hung them on the wall, you could actually hear the gears turning, and you could hear it through the wall, too. Anyway, so, taking tests and everything else, I became a certified irrigation specialist, yeah, back in the 70s. Those are really pretty simplistic machines back in that day and age. And now, 40 years later, here we are with uh, Wi-Fi capable, programmable, uh, Bluetooth infused irrigation timers in this day and age. But all in all, they still do the same job as that old Rick Dell timer did back in the 70s. Back in the 70s when all it was doing was turning on the valves, same thing that the old modern ones are doing today. So, so what's the difference? Well, in this day and age, the versatility, the programmability of the new ones are as far and away. You can really get into a, a lot of customization of your irrigation timer. But with that, I will tell you, if you're not really tech savvy and you just want it to do its basic job, I'm gonna give you a huge 50% discount of education right now. On the front of that timer, you will see a center turn knob on almost all of them. And on the right-hand side, the right-hand side of that turn knob is what I want you to concentrate on and kind of ignore the left side for now. This side is for the DIY homeowner. This side is for timers that start taking care of professional grounds and greenhouses and seasonal adjustments and watering percentages, blah, blah, blah. They're all good things if you want to get complicated. So on the right-hand side, you're going to have generally the first, the first notch over is going to be your year, your date, and your time of day. Then you go off into uh, start times, run times, days of the week, that kind of stuff of when you're gonna program it. And that's really all you need to concentrate on when it comes to your irrigation timer. Nothing more fancy than that. Setting up a timer, setting up a timer is really straightforward. There are two different kinds of irrigation timers. There's an indoor rated one and an outdoor rated one. Now, at, towards the end of my contracting career, I just went with an outdoor rated timer, no matter what it was, whether I was putting it in someone's garage, out on the outside wall, in the shop, in the shed, it, it didn't matter, I was gonna use an outdoor rated timer. Basically, it's a timer that's encased in a box that's sealed with a rubber gasket, so it's weatherproof. 
pretty much. So why not make it weatherproof anywhere it is? The indoor rated timer is basically a little more simplistic. All it is is you got a, an exterior transformer at the end of a small little cord that you're gonna plug into the wall. And then that small little cord is gonna go up inside the timer and it's gonna go into a, a positive and negative connection that you're gonna tighten it down and you're good to go. The outdoor rated timer, you gotta take a couple of wire nuts, you gotta strip off a little bit of a pigtail cord and then you have to wire it into the timer and then put it back inside its little box and you'll be ready to go and you plug it in the, the wall just like you would a vacuum cleaner, that kind of thing. But the outdoor rated one is generally a high voltage on one side with a transformer that steps it down to 12 volt of which the timer actually uses. It's a low voltage unit that's getting fed high voltage. The indoor rated timer is 12 volt right from the wall socket itself. It's got an exterior transformer that takes voltage, allows the timer to work. All the internal parts of a timer is all low voltage. So you should feel pretty secure knowing full well you're not gonna get zapped by operating anything on that timer whatsoever. And that's including any of the cabling you're bringing in from your valves as well. Putting those things in and screwing them into their little lugs, their little slots, or their little, their little toggle switch areas, you don't have to worry about the voltage. If you are leery of anything electrical, and I know there are some folks out there, then seek out a professional to install your timer for you. Have them, him or her, show you exactly what they're doing and how to do it. That way, like the old book says, you know, give a man a fish or teach him to fish, one or the other. It's gonna work out a lot better in the long run for you. So one of the things I used to do with uh, clients is at the end of a job, I would always conduct a walkthrough. And the walkthrough generally consisted of 30 minutes to an hour if people had lots of questions. But when it came to the timers, I always had people look at those things and then look at me and then look at the timer and you could see that deer in the headlights look. And so what I did, and it really worked well, is I would have them program their timer with my instruction. That way, once they did it once, I would go back in and I would erase everything and I'd say, okay, do it on your own this time, yourself. And 90% of the time, people got it. Now, I'm not sponsored by any sort of you know, company when it comes to timers, but I will tell you that I was always uh, using Rainbird timers, the ESP timer. Uh, for probably the last 15 years. And they've come quite a ways with the, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and apps and all the other things that go along with it. But I only used Rainbird because I got comfortable with it. I had used Hunter, I have used Iritrol, and I have used Toro. Now, I'm not sponsored by those guys, but I will tell you as a personal opinion, I do not use Orbit. Um, Orbit is a... Uh, is a company that puts out a, a product and I have not had good success with them. Uh, I have, as a matter of fact, I've been called out on many occasions to replace those. They just don't have the longevity I think that they really need. And I don't really know why. I would have to say it's something in, something in the electronics, but it is what it is. And as a professional, you're always wanting to put in the best quality so that you do not have callbacks, so that your customer is satisfied, and the reliability is going to be there for many, many, many years to come. Okay, so when you're talking about uh, timers, especially an irrigation timer this time of year, it is time to go out, and if you haven't familiarized yourself, now's the greatest time to do it. It's not freezing cold. You may be getting a little bit of weather, like we're gonna get weather tonight, and it's time to dial those numbers back if you're still watering. Now, where we, Maestro and I have been traveling, there's a lot of places that don't even have irrigation. They don't have, they just get rain all summer long, and that's their, that's their sprinkler system. But where I come from and where I hail from, from Northern California, there's all kinds of watering going on. And the best thing to do right now is think water conservation. Give your landscape enough that it can thrive and survive without overwatering and certainly underwatering. One of the best ways I always suggest is try to hook up a rain sensor device to your new timer or your existing timer if it will take one 
and then mount that outside. Those rain sensors are a great way to save water, especially when the heavens do open up and you kind of, uh-oh, I forgot to turn the timer off. Then the sensor will take care of it. And if you receive like a tenth of an inch of rain or more, it's going gonna, it's gonna to shut your timer off for a minimum of 48 hours. You know, irrigation timers are a great way to really, compared to yesteryear, minimize your landscape maintenance when it comes to the waterability of your yard. I think that is a word, yes, waterability. But if not, I just made one up. Anyway, you know, reducing your landscape maintenance, besides going out the front door and taking the old iron key and turning on the iron valves and then going back in and doing other stuff and coming back out and turning them off and turning another one on, your timer really has minimized that form of maintenance for you. But what happens when it, something goes wrong? You know, the service calls that I've done over the years, probably 90% of them boils down to generally one of three problems. Number one, electricity to the timer. Number two, electricity from the timer to the valves. And number three, physical damage somewhere along the route from the timer to the valve, a physical damage. So what I would do most of the time is evaluate it as far as what the source was using a, a voltage meter or whatever it might be. Uh, most of the time I find that I was getting calls on old timers and everything electronic has a lifespan. It does. We know that about our phones, about our computers. We know that they have a certain lifespan. Well, irrigation timers are no different. They're a machine just like anything else. And a lot of the ones I was replacing is because people weren't caring for them. They weren't dusting them off. They weren't testing them. And pretty soon their, their yard is dying and they don't understand why. And they panic and they call. And you get there and you go, well, your timer's not working. How long has it been? Like, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't checked it. Well, you got to check it. You, you got to check it at least four times a year to make sure everything's working. The last thing you want to know is that your timer's not working because your lawn is dead or dying. So make sure that you check it. Put a reminder in your phone that spring, summer, and fall, you're going to check the timer. And most of the time, if I, if I had voltage coming out of the timer but not at the valves, then I would just, I would tell them it's a cabling problem and it's gonna be a lot more than me just trying to fix and reprogram your timer. And sometimes it was. Sometimes it was hundreds and hundreds of dollars in order to tra trace down where the problem was. And I always did it the easy way. I just re-put new stuff in. Rather than trying to band-aid it, I would just do a surgery and make sure that it was fixed once and for all. It's the easiest way to go. So the timers these days, you can expect to put one in here in 2021. Unless there's something really weird, you can expect good, solid, reliable performance with a good maintenance schedule 10 to 15 years without, without any problem. 10 to 15 years it should last. As far as maintenance goes, make sure you open it up, make sure you got no spideys and other things that have crawled up inside. Uh, sometimes people don't put their wires from the timer to the valve when it's exposed. They don't put it in a PVC pipe and run it up in so there's that exposed wire. Sometimes mice, rats, squirrels, they love to chew on the casings and sometimes they'll, they'll short a wire out. So sometimes you have to check. You gotta check at the valve, check at the timer, and if there's any place in the run of whatever you have it, you should check. If you run it underneath your house, especially if you run it underneath your house, you gotta get under that crawl space and check it periodically because that's where our little rodents tend to be. Okay, moving on, let's talk about lighting timers. Lighting timers slash transformers. Those little, those little doohickey things are out there serving your landscape and the landscape lighting investment that you have made. They are just as reliable as many irrigation timers if you get quality stuff out of the gate. So you can look at various companies like FX and Vista. I'm gonna throw Portfolio in there, but it's not my first choice. I have used Portfolio transformer timers. Uh, they generally work fairly well but they sometimes come off that production line where something goes wrong and uh, yeah, we can have problems. Anyway, if you're shopping for a timer, I suggest you look for one that is uh, stainless steel, obviously outdoor rated, 
and that it has multiple taps to it. And when I say multiple taps, when you take the, the lid up or the lid off and you look at it, you'll see those, those taps. They're, most of the time they're color coded, not always, but uh, you'll have like a 12 volt, 12.5, 13 and a 15 volt tap. And those things need to be kept clean. They need to be kept bug free and dust free. What they're really, their main purpose is, is to throw a certain amount of voltage down those cables and out to your fixtures. That 15 volt one is mainly for a much longer run of cable. Uh, a 12-2 cable, a 10-2 cable that really throws the voltage out far. And if you're still using incandescent bulbs on your fixtures, which time to upgrade, go LED so much less voltage, so many more fixtures per cable, it really does. But your 12 volt lugs or taps, they can be for your shorter runs, your shorter ones closer to your transformer, closer to the source. Now the transformer timer is there, you basically have a high voltage side that you're plugging in the wall, and then you have a big transformer that reduces that voltage down to what your cables can take and what your fixtures can take. This is not high voltage stuff. This is stuff that you're going to use on a, on a nightly, regular basis, and this time of year is going to be specifically important to do some adjusting. Adjusting for your start times and your stop times, and check to see if you have what they call a photo cell or not. Some of it is optional. You can add to it. Other times you just have the old Christmas tree timer light on it, plain and simple. But if you do have a photo cell, it's time to clean that and then make sure that you have your um, number of hours, your run hours adjusted for the time of year. This time of year, maybe it comes on around seven and it goes off whenever you want. Maybe you like lights on all night long, so it comes on at dusk and it goes off at dawn. It's totally up to you. Just remember the longer hours you run every night, you shorten the bulb life and you have to replace the bulbs a little more often. Just a little tip. I guess one of the things that I really want to suggest to you is know the two timers that you have. If you have a lighting system, know that transformer and that timer well and double check it at least, at least two times a year. And then go out and check each one of your fixtures out there and make sure that each and every fixture is working. If it is not, you may have a little diagnostic time that you're going to have to look at. Maybe you put in another bulb, it's as simple as that. Maybe you have a problem in the wiring, something has come loose underground that's been buried. So you have to address that. Uh, make sure that you keep the inside of all your timers in your transformers clean and bug free. That's one of the biggest problems in maintenance. And if you can, when you run your cables up into your timers, make sure they're in a PVC casing or whatever so that we don't have chewies and we don't have loose cabling just sitting on the wall. It'll eventually degrade through UV exposure and you want to have it on there. Then that piping that's on there, you can color code it to the side of your house or whatever and protect that PVC pipe as well. It disguises it against the wall and it also protects it from the UV exposure. So when it comes to this time of year, those timers and those transformers are going through a paradigm shift. You've had the heavy watering schedules of the hot summer months and now we are paring down if you are still watering. You are still watering enough to keep everything going. Now it's time to pare down. A little simple tool that I learned a long time ago is for every 10 degrees of loss of daytime temperature, you can eliminate one day per week. So if you have 90s and you suddenly are going to be in the 70s, eliminate two days of water. It'll help your water bill and it'll also conserve some water as well. So timers, whether it be irrigation or whether it be lighting, I am always here to answer your technical questions as far as that. They're pretty straightforward little machines and they do a great job maintaining and operating a big portion of our landscape, watering it and lighting it. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me at any time. The email is always in the description below. And don't forget to check out the website, youryardcoach.com. Help support us here just a little bit. I'll catch you guys next Friday, every Friday. As always, to your landscape success. Thanks for your attention, guys. See you next week. Take care.